So you're about to see the sum of all fears when it comes to tech censorship and deplatforming. Facebook and Twitter's uh, CEOs were grilled in a hearing with Congress. And look at the question that Republican Tom Cotton has for them. And look at the implication of what he's saying. To the actions you've taken about the 2016 election, both of your platforms, um, and specifically one action you haven't taken, you, you have removed several accounts um, as a result uh, of your own investigations. I think some of this committee's work, and, and I commend your companies for that. One, accounts that one set of accounts that remain on your platforms are WikiLeaks and Julian Assange. Um, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, when he was the director of the CIA, characterized WikiLeaks as a non-state hostile intelligence service. Uh, this committee has agreed with that assessment now for a couple years in a row, yet both WikiLeaks, uh, which propagated some of the leaked emails in the 2016 election from the Democrats, remain active on both Facebook and Twitter, as does Julian Assange. Um, Ms. Sandberg, could you explain why Facebook continues to allow their, their accounts to be active? I'm not going to defend WikiLeaks, and I'm not going to defend the actions of any page or, or actor on our platform. WikiLeaks has been public information. It's available broadly on, on other media. And as such, it doesn't violate our terms of service, and it remains up on our site. And Mr. Dorsey? So we, we also have not found any violation of our terms of service. But uh, you know we are open, as always, to any law enforcement insight that would indicate a violation of our terms. Thank you. Uh, my time has nearly expired. Again, I want to commend your companies for making you available and both of you for appearing. Uh, I would urge both your companies or any company like yours to consider whether or not they want to be partners in the fight against um, you know, our adversaries in places like Beijing and Moscow and Pyongyang and Tehran, um, as opposed to even-handed or, or neutral arbiters. Um, that should scare the shit out of you. Let me explain why. So first of all, you need to know that these companies are already kowtowing. And Facebook is the worst on this front. Facebook, There are countless stories of Facebook basically meeting with top Israeli government officials and them saying, hey, listen, um, we're not f okay with that Palestinian human rights group, so can you ax them and Facebook will do it. Facebook will go into markets where there are authorita authoritarian governments and basically just do what the authoritarian governments want them to do and then allow the platform with censorship and deplatforming of agents that those respective governments don't want on the website. So Facebook, they have no principles. They have no, you know, no morality. They act like, oh, I don't care about human rights and justice and freedom and freedom of speech and freedom of the press. I'll censor whoever you want me to censor because I care about money more than anything. I care about our business more than anything. So they already do this with other authoritarian governments. Now, the U.S., of course, we have the First Amendment, we have uh, freedom of speech and freedom of the press, we have the Constitution, and we're, we're a unique country in, in our interpretation of these laws because we lean very heavily on the side of free speech. We don't, even, we don't have hate speech uh, laws in the U.S. because it's viewed as unconstitutional. You're allowed to uh, be hateful. That's totally allowed. I mean, it was famous, it, famously the ACLU defended um, the KKK when they wanted to march in Skokie. So uh, the KKK marching through a predominantly Jewish town, uh, but the ACLU, who's viewed as like a left-wing group, defended them, and it's on principle. It's Because it's not about, hey, I'm defending them on the substance. I'm defending them on principle. Because if you don't allow the KKK to do this, then, you know, what next? In a right-wing town, you don't allow communists to march or socialists to march? You don't allow a DSA meeting in, in the, the town square in whatever bumblefuck place? So it's a slippery slope to so defend the principle of it. Well, now, again, we're at the point where the town square is not the town square anymore. The social media platforms are the town square because that's where we all go to communicate. And we still have a, a situation in the U.S. where that's run, it's run by private companies. So it is uh, tech CEO billionaire overlords who get to determine your fate on those sites. Well... Already that's a problem, because even if there was no pressure from the government, they get to make decisions on their own whims. Yeah, our terms of service. Terms of service are, are vague on purpose, so that they can kick you off for any reason at all. So it's already the whims of, of the tech billionaire dictator, if you will. That's already a problem. 
Well, it's even worse than that now, because here, oh my God, we're calling social media platforms to come testify in front of Congress. Why? Because they played a role in the 2016 election with Russian disinformation. No. So in other words, if there are other uh, governments where there are accounts that spew the narrative of said governments, we're going to say that is propaganda and we're going to ask you to pull those accounts off. Now, is there a process to determine whether or not these uh, particular accounts are indeed funded by said governments? No, because they don't. there's no transparency. They don't show any process. They don't prove any of that stuff. So and that's weird because now it's like, okay, well, what if it's not an account that's linked to a government financially, but it's just an account that, you know, like I've spoken about it before. The U.S., the CIA, overthrew the Iranian government in 1953, a coup of their democratically elected leader, Mohammad Mossadegh, because Mossadegh said, oh, I'm going to nationalize the oil industry and give the money to the people of Iran, as opposed to giving cheap oil to the U.K. and the U.S. So when I point that out, that happens to be factually accurate, but it also happens to technically be Iranian propaganda because it's the exact stuff that the Iranian government would want everybody to know because they got a raw deal in that situation. So, are they only going to pull people who are literally financially linked? Mm, doubt it, because we've already seen examples of people, oh, Russian propaganda, and then people were pulled, and then we know that those accounts indeed were not Russian propaganda. So, it, it's a slippery slope, and now we're going full speed down that slope, because now you have Tom Cotton, a notorious neocon war hawk, bloodthirsty, foaming-at-the-mouth lunatic, who's now begging... Social media giants, oh, I think you should pull WikiLeaks because they're a hostile, uh, a, a non-government hostile foreign actor. So in other words, they say things that I don't want the American public to hear, so get rid of them. So in other words, that is 100% directly in the face of the principle of the First Amendment. You're supposed to be able to dissent, you're supposed to be able to call out your government, you're supposed to be able to say whatever you want in free society. Well, what he's saying is, uh, they say things that I'm not comfortable with them saying because it makes us look bad, the U.S. government, so you gotta pull them. Because what does WikiLeaks do? Oh, here's information that the government was keeping secret that they shouldn't have been able to keep secret because it just exposes the crimes they were committing. Like, for example, they're the ones who sh exposed what uh, Chelsea Manning showed, which was, oh, our soldiers are massacring innocent civilians in Iraq, circling around, massacring the first responders, and then they're on video laughing about it. So... That should have been seen. Now, they said, oh, it's top secret, it's classified. Why do they classify? Why do they call that top secret? Because it fucking embarrasses them and it makes them look like scumbags. So the U.S. government doesn't want to expose the crimes that they commit, so they're going to try to hide it. Well, now you have Tom Cotton prodding social media giants, hey, you should really pull things that make us look bad directly in the face of the First Amendment. They, they want these social media giants to be U.S. propaganda outlets. No, no, no. Don't allow anything that would be from the perspective of, the, of Russia or Iran or China or anybody who we disagree with. Only allow... Now, let me ask you a question. Is Tom Cotton going to say, hey, you should pull the RNC account because all they do is pro-Republican and pro-U.S. propaganda? No, he's not going to say it because in his mind... If we do the propaganda, it is by definition not propaganda. If they do the propaganda, it is propaganda. So he wants to use these social media outlets as a tool to back his own narrative. Well, Tom Cotton's narrative is not the narrative. In fact, he's wrong about almost fucking everything. He's one of the biggest torture proponents, by the way. So it, this is dangerous and this is scary. And, you, and the thing that really frightens me is you saw the response there from the two CEOs. Well, um, I mean, they didn't violate our terms of service. Mm, I don't know. I'm kind of open if you show me law enforcement stuff that says they did. So we see what's coming. We know how it's going to unfold. They're going to set up some sort of commission, the CIA, the FBI, whoever, where they have an open line of communication with top officials at the social media platforms. And whatever the CIA or the FBI says, hey, we want you to pull this account, they'll pull the account. And they'll say, oh, law enforcement told us that maybe they did something wrong, so now we're going to pull them to be on the safe side. And then the whole thing that made these platforms good originally, namely free speech, totally open platforms, now it's gone, dead and gone. So, this should terrify you. And just to be clear, so everybody knows, the answer is regulate these platforms like public utilities. That's the answer. 
regulate these platforms like public utilities, and then the First Amendment applies. And that doesn't mean that if somebody actually does commit defamation, you can't go after them. Of course you can. You can go after somebody for defamation in the U.S. now. If it's not online, of course you can. So you'll still, but this way we'll have a process. It'll be out in the open and we'll see exactly what's happening. And we, the default setting is free speech. They don't want that. They want the default setting to be pull down everything that makes the U.S. government look bad and only allow our propaganda. Terrible, terrible, terrible way to do things.